What's up everyone, today I'll be focusing on the BMW R60-5 motorcycle engine. Off to my left, I have a bunch of measuring tools which will give me the opportunity to measure all the components that came out of this engine, like the crankshaft or even the camshaft. Down below, I also have the service manual, so once I have all the parts measured up, I can compare the values to the factory specifications which are in the service manual. Once I have those values written down, I can then figure out if it's within spec or out of spec. Everything that is out of spec, I have to repair or replace. The first thing I'll discuss are the measuring tools that I'll be using in today's video. The first tool I'll introduce is the outside micrometer. This set right here runs from zero all the way up to six inches, and this is an imperial set. Thankfully, in the service manual, we have metric and imperial values, so this will make it super easy to use this measuring tool. This measuring tool will only measure outside diameters, so what that means is if we look at the crankshaft, it will only measure the outside diameters. For instance, this main bearing journal right here, or even the connecting rod journals which are on the crankshaft. Same thing on the camshaft, it'll only measure the outside diameter over here or over here. Now, if you want to measure the inside diameters, for instance, on this camshaft flange, so that's the inner diameter right here, or main bearings that are on the inside or inside of the block, we will be using the telescoping gauge set, which is right here. This set runs from eight millimeter all the way up to 150 millimeter or five sixteenths all the way up to six inches. This set right here will be good enough for all the components which I have on this table. So you will not need anything bigger than this. The feeler gauge on the other hand, I will just be using once because I only have to measure the clearance on the oil pump and that is measured once it's within the engine block. On this table, I also have a dial bore gauge set and this set will come in super handy when I measure up the bores of each cylinder. So I talked enough about the measuring tools, now I'll grab my outside micrometer and start measuring up the crankshaft. The first measurement I will take is on the main bearing, which is closer to the front end of the crankshaft. You will notice there is a taper right here, and this right here is for the alternator. This measurement, according to the service manual, should be 2.362 inches or 60 millimeter. So with that said, I will grab my micrometer and set it up for this measurement. I have to grab the extension, which is for three inches, because we have to measure under three inches. Um, I will be grabbing the three inch extension. I'm going to thread this in right here. Make sure it's hand tight. I do not want to over tighten this just by hand. And I'm going to grab my probe and place it right in between. Now I'm going to grab the outside of the micrometer and start turning it over. And what I want to do right now is I want to make sure that this is exactly three inches. And according to the micrometer, if you look at it right there, it is three inches. So I'm going to open this up, let that drop down, and place this off to the side. Now, since I know this is three inches right here, I can go ahead and measure the crankshaft. This right here is probably the best view I can give you guys. I will grab my micrometer, and what I want to do is I want to place my hand right here in the middle, and this will balance the whole micrometer. Now I have it open at three inches, and now I go to narrow it down, so I'm going to thread this in. According to the service manual, it says 2.362. Now, when I come a little bit closer, I'm just gonna slow down and turn very slowly. Now, I'm going to make sure it's now tight. So right now I can remove it, but now I'm gonna tighten it down and you will hear a ratchet. I'm not gonna go over three turns. I'm gonna make sure I can still move it a little bit, but then I'm gonna lock it on this position pull it out and I'm going to read this measurement. So when we started off, this was exactly three inches, but if I would bring the micrometer all the way down to zero, it would be at two inches. So now since we narrow it down, um, it is over two inches for sure, because when I look at this right here, it is already past the three. So we have two inches, point three. That half line right there vertically is another half. So that is 2.35. And then we have to add 10 to that. So we're gonna have 2.36. And then we also have 11 and 12. So we're gonna have 2.361 and 2.362. As you'll notice, the vertical line is right in between those two horizontals at 11 and 12. So this measurement right here tells me it is at 2.3615 because it's because it is right between 11 and 12. 
Over here in the service manual, you will notice the main bearing journal diameter comes in at 2.362 and we have two tolerances that are negative. And I wrote that down over here on my piece of paper. So the main bearing on the front and the rear are exactly the same measurement and they have the same tolerances. But when we look at the tolerances, since they're both negative from our first number, we should have a tolerance between 2.3616 and 2.3612. So when we look at what I just measured, I measured 2.3615, and that's still on the higher end of the tolerance. So we are good. I managed to get my first measurement with the outside micrometer on that crankshaft. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and share with you guys all the measurements I take with this tool, but I will have a spreadsheet down below in the description if you guys are interested to know what measurements I had on this engine. Right now, I will go ahead and take the outside micrometer as well as a telescoping gauge set to measure some of the inside diameters. Since I just measured the outside diameter of the main bearing, I'll go ahead and measure the inside diameter of the corresponding main bearing. To do that, I'll grab my telescoping gauge and I'll grab this one right here. This one will be suitable for the inside diameter. Now I'll put the set aside. According to the service manual, um, there isn't a specific inner diameter of the main bearing, but what it does tell us over here, we should have a main bearing clearance of one thousandths of an inch all the way up to four thousandths. Four thousandths will be the max, but one is the minimum. Now, when we go ahead onto our spreadsheet, we had this value before, which was within the tolerance. So anything above this up to four thousandths of an inch should be technically within spec. The way this telescoping gauge works is on the end, we have two little pins which are spring loaded internally. This will always push out and this right here is the max setting it's currently at. Now, since we only need an inner diameter of around two inches and three eighths, it will be compressed to around this size right here. On the end, we have a knob we can turn that and tighten it up a little bit and we can let this go and it should stay in place currently this telescoping gauge is set to a certain length and the only way i can figure that out is if i place it within the micrometer and with the micrometer i will then be able to figure out what measurement i have now we'll go ahead and place the telescoping gauge within that main bearing. So the way I'm going to use this telescoping gauge is I'm going to actually tighten it up already to a smaller size than the bore diameter. Now I'm going to place this inside of the bearing and I'm going to loosen off the knob just like that. Now as you'll notice, it'll fall into place. It'll almost go into the middle by itself. But I cannot just tighten it down and say it's good or I want to measure that certain spot. What I really want to focus on is on one spot on the bottom and I'm just going to play with the top end. What I have to do now is I have to make sure that I'm exactly in the middle of the diameter, but that I'm also not crooked with the whole telescoping gauge itself. So I cannot be on an angle like this or like this. I really have to make sure that I'm straight with the bearing, but also that the telescoping gauge is not off to the side in any way like this or like that. So it's very important that you have always two directions that are in line and once you are all set up, you can then tighten down your telescoping gauge, pull it out gently, and then compare it in your micrometer. So I'll do that right now. And just like that, I tighten it all up, and now I'll take this measurement and compare it in my micrometer. I'm going to open it up just a little bit, going to leave it laid down on this table. Uh, that's the easiest way because I do not have a micrometer stand. I'm going to grab my telescoping gauge and I'm going to turn this in slowly. I'm always going to move the telescoping gauge around up and down uh, to make sure that the micrometer doesn't grab on the telescoping gauge. I'm just going to turn it slowly. Once I get very close, I'm going to feel a little bit of resistance. And once I feel a little bit of resistance, I'm going to back it off. Okay, right here, there's resistance right there. I'm going to lock it. Okay, I need to tighten it just a little bit more. Okay, and just like that, I'm going to take this measurement and write it down on that paper. So I wrote down the value which I just measured, 2.3654, 
and our measurement, which was on the outside diameter, was 2.3615. If we subtract this from this, we come to 0 0.0039. So that value is closer to 4 thousandths of an inch, which is already the red line of the allowed tolerance. Now what I'm going to do in the near future is replace that bearing. So if you guys are interested in that, stick around for upcoming videos. But right now I shared with you guys how to measure outside diameters and inside diameters. The next thing I will share with you guys is to take the fuel gauge and check the oil pump clearance. The next thing I will focus on is the outer rotor clearance to the housing within the engine block. Now I'm going to grab the outer rotor and I'm going to place the dot or the yellow mark towards the outside. I'm going to place it right into there, just like that. I'm going to make sure it turns and that it's against the back end of the housing. I'm going to grab my filler gauge and I have right here four thousandths, five, six, and seven. Seven is just a little bit too much, but I shouldn't be able to put that in there. But anything between four and six should be great. So I'm going to check that just like this on the top. Okay, six doesn't go in. Five almost feels like it would go in. I'm going to move down to four. I'm going to see if that fits. And as you can see, that right there actually fits. It's hard to do it with one hand, but it actually does fit. And I'm just going to turn this oil pump outer rotor over. I'm going to place number four in there again. Okay, that fits. I'm going to check number five. As you can see, only four thousandths of an inch fits between the outer rotor and the engine block housing. So the clearance on the outer rotor of the oil pump is perfect. If you guys ever wanna use your fueler gauge to check any gap or clearance, just make sure you push that in by hand and very, very slowly and gently because you do not wanna damage the fueler gauge itself or you don't wanna scuff anything up on the metal, especially on aluminum. But right now I'm gonna measure up the bores on each cylinder and we're gonna have some values and we're gonna see if those cylinders on this engine are still in good condition. On this side table, I have a couple more engine parts and we'll have a good look at this left cylinder. I'll share with you guys how I measure this left cylinder first and the right cylinder will basically be the same thing. So I'll just share with you guys how it works on one cylinder. Over there, I have my bore dial gauge. I'll be using this right now to measure all the values that are specified within the service manual. When we look at this cylinder specifically, or even the piston, it gives us a little hint of what the measurements should be. So on this piston, you will notice it has a letter B and it's 73.47 millimeters. So this is piston B and this is also cylinder B. In our manual over here, you will notice there are three sizes of cylinders and pistons. So cylinder A, B, and C are very close to each other, but they have different sizes. Same with the pistons. That's on the other page over here. The pistons, you will have standard piston diameters, A, B, and C. And what I just mentioned before, we have 73.47. So that is correct. We will have to take the values from cylinder B, which is right here, and that will be for an R60 slash 5, 73.51. I wrote these values down over here and I converted them to Imperial as well. So we have our piston and cylinder bore. Right here are the values in metric and Imperial values are right here. And according to these values, we should have these clearances. So the values I just shared with you guys are the original factory values. We should have those values, but since this engine has been running for multiple years, we will have some wear and tear. So let's figure out how much wear there really is within the cylinder bore. The first thing I will grab is the bore dial gauge. As you will see, we have a dial on the tip, and this acts very similar to the telescoping gauge we saw before. As you can see on the bottom of the dial bore gauge, um, there is no insert in it right now. So down below in our kit, I will make up the difference. So this will fit perfectly within the cylinder bore. My dial bore gauge has now been set up and the dial has been rotated 90 degrees. So as I insert it into the bore, you should be able to see the dial. 
Once I insert it into the bore, I will go one inch down and I will also zero out the dial itself to the needle. So let's do that right now. Going to go one inch down, something like that. And I'm going to make sure I'm straight right here and I'm going to rock it back and forth. And as you can see, that right there is the highest point and I'm going to zero that out right there. I have my measurement dialed in with the dial bore gauge and it's at zero, but right now I still have to compress it by one turn. So as you'll see, as I compress this, it's gonna go up to zero. And once it's at that position, that's when I know this is the proper diameter of the cylinder bore. To verify the measurement, I still have to use an outside mic to verify it just like I did with the telescoping gauge set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert it into the micrometer and I will need two hands once again. I have to open it up a little bit more. And just like that, I'm going to start tightening this. And as I tighten this up, you will notice it's going to be right at zero now. And if that's the measurement, I'm just going to check it and verify it once more in between. I really wanna make sure that this is correct. And now, since I verified it, I can lock the mic and remove the dial gauge. We'll put this aside. And with this measurement right here, I will go to the paper and write it down. So this right here is the measurement I took off the micrometer, 2.8955. And this is greater than the factory measurement, 2.8940. As you may see, it's one and a half thousandths of an inch greater, and that is because it is worn towards the top of the cylinder. You will even notice right here, there's a little ridge, but it's not even a step. It's just a slight little dip, and that's very common on any cylinder. So with one measurement, I'm not done measuring up this cylinder bore. I need two more measurements on the same height, just in different directions. That will give me a better understanding if the bore is oval. Once I have those measurements written down on paper, I will go to the next level and that will be exactly in the middle of the cylinder bore. I need three measurements on that height. After that, I'll go one step down, which is almost at the bottom of the bore, and I'll take three more measurements. In total, I should have nine measurements and that will give me a better understanding if everything is within spec and or if I have to repair something. On this paper, I wrote down all nine values. And as you can see, values from number one on the first height were all the same. Right there, we have 2.8955 on all three. Step two, which was exactly in the middle of the cylinder, it got a little bit smaller, which was 2.8950. And our third height, which is all the way to the bottom of the cylinder, was 2.8940. So when we look at these three values from top to bottom, you will understand that the cylinder itself, if this right here is the top and this right here is the bottom, we have a larger value on the top and a smaller value on the bottom. So our cylinder actually looks just like this right here. These are the cylinder walls and they are basically tapered off just like this. So if this is the bottom and this is the top, it looks basically just like a cup and our cylinder walls are worn towards the top. We have the largest value in the middle section. We have a smaller value and on the bottom or close to the bottom, at least in this area right here, we technically have an original value and this was machined from factory. When we look at this cylinder from the top, so if I draw it like this, you will notice I measured these cylinders this way. So measurement number one was actually in the middle. So it was like this. Measurement number two was off to the left, like that. And measurement number three was off to the right, just like that. A good thing about this is, even though it's tapered from top to bottom, in a circle, the measurements are all the same. So 
the diameter is very round and that's actually very interesting to see. Most of the time when a cylinder bore is worn, it is also a little bit oval. So this one is very interesting because it's perfectly cylindrical from top to bottom. But right now, if you guys would like to know the results that I received throughout all my measurements, because I did not show everything on camera, you guys can click the spreadsheet down below and check out the values which I received on this engine. In an upcoming video, I will share with you guys an engine rebuild video, but that will take a couple of days or even weeks. So I gave you guys a quick rundown on how to measure up engine components. This engine right here happens to be a BMW R60-5 engine, which is around 600 cc's. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter which engine you're measuring. Almost all measuring techniques are exactly the same. For the crankshaft, you use an outside micrometer, and for the internal measurements, you use a dial bore gauge or the telescoping bore gauge. If you have some of these measuring tools at home, you're gonna be very, very well off because you can almost measure anything you want with those measuring tools. If you guys have any questions about any components I have right here on this table or anything that you guys saw in any of these BMW episodes, Drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below and I'll see you guys in an upcoming video.